Real quick, I want to thank this video's sponsor, which is Simply Safe. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this giant 10 foot by 10 foot custom sign on my CNC machine. If you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about it. I wanted something bold and clear and beautiful that could be seen from the main road. So let me show you how I did it. First off, I know most people aren't going to need such a large sign, but the techniques can be applied to any size of sign. I started off the project by importing my shop's logo into vCarve, which is the program I use for my CNC work. Then I cut out all of the letters. I knew that these letters would be left flat and untextured, so there was nothing special about cutting them out, except for arranging them to make the most out of the material. It was hilarious to me how large the letters were coming out, but even more fun to have a giant ax head to chase around employees with. I set the letters aside and started on the background, which I wanted to do something special for. I really wanted some sort of texture on the background so that the giant sign wouldn't be just super flat. And it turns out that there's a cool texturing toolpath already in V-Carve that takes, I guess, scoops out of wood at random intervals air quotes around random because there's actually the different parameters that you personally can set inside of vCarve. You can set the length of stroke, the overlap, the depth of the passes, all of these different features. The look can also be affected by the bit that you use. It needs to be a round nose bit and I used the largest one I could find which is a two inch bit. Then since my sign is so large I set the perimeters to be very long. If you were doing a much smaller sign then a smaller bit and stroke would be better suited. Oh, doesn't that look awesome? It also has such a neat feel to it. Real quick, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. If you've been following along, you know that I use Simply Safe or my shop security for a while now. It is incredibly effective, reliable home or shop security that will make sure your property is safe at a fair price of only 50 cents a day. I recently added Simply Safe to my commercial shop as well, and I can relax knowing that my space and tools are professionally monitored 24/7. And if anything happens, they will make sure that the police get called. Simply Safe system is modern, comprehensive, and protects your property inside and out. Their professional monitoring has three and a half times faster police dispatch by their security specialists who provide real eyewitness evidence to the police department. I've decided to take my new shop security one step further and also add the new Simply Safe lock, which is designed to make sure my door is always locked. I can grant access remotely if necessary, and I can even set up unique access codes so that I get alerted as to exactly who is locking and unlocking the door. Simply Safe's reliable, comprehensive coverage at a value is one of the reasons experts call it the number one recommended home security. If you're ready to easily take control of your home or shop security, then go to simplysafe.com slash April to learn more. Another really cool feature I got to try for the first time is something called tiling. This 10 foot sign requires multiple sheets of plywood to cover the entire area. And there's a setting in V-Carve where you can tell it the total area and then break that into equal sections and create tiles. What's amazing about this is the CNC will keep track of which board goes where and cut in a pattern on each one individually so that everything lines up from one board to the next once it's all put together and complete. Next, I loaded up everything from my own shop and moved them over to the new building to start installing. The previous owner had a large bay door on this side of the building, then all of his advertising signs around it. With my plan set up, a door here won't be needed, so I decided to get rid of it, reuse the door in a different wall where it will be needed, and turn the opening into my giant sign. First thing to do there was to frame up a wall to place the sign panels on. This was simple enough, just nailing a few studs to a top and bottom plate and then standing it up and securing it. I am talking about it pretty calmly right now, but this is such an exciting time for me that in real time there is a lot of happy dancing and squealing, for lack of a better word, going on. After securing the wooden frame to the metal frame of the building, next we sheathed it. In the past, I've always used OSB with house wrap. However, this time we use Zip System, which is a more upgraded alternative. It has a protective layer on the outside that eliminates needing to use house wrap, so that's a plus. The panels are secured into place and then a special tape is applied to all of the seams. And that's that for that step. 
Now let's just start adding the panels to it. However, I wanted to do a few things first before just tossing them up there. One, I wanted to make sure I had them in the correct order so that the background carvings lined up perfectly. I also wanted to lay out indication markings on where each letter needed to be placed so that we wouldn't have to mess with pulling two tapes while also holding up these giant letters. If you do a tiling job, I recommend marking each board as it comes off to save time on arranging things. Then for marking, we utilize SketchUp. With the program, Jake could pull a tape measure tool to get two different points of reference for each letter. Then I could use two tapes on the background to actually make the marks. I'm using a paint pen here to make them easy to read. Okay, now we are ready for install. So let's start with the background. To make sure things turned out center, we started with the bottom center panel. First finding center on the opening, then on the panel. We would countersink and then attach it using screws. After the first one is placed, all of the others are easy to set as we could just line up the carvings. Whew, and look at that. Technology is so cool. For being just six pieces of plywood up here, these engravings all lining up to one another creates such a spectacular look. Okay, okay, and now the letters. We started at the top and worked our way down, but any order works. And this part goes very quickly as we've already had the markings on where things needed to be placed. And at this point, there was definitely a lot of happy squeaking going on. Ah, this is the beginning, and it's so cool. Wow. That looks so cool. My goodness. <laughs> ah. Okay, but wait, there is more. At this point, the sign looked great as is, but to really throw it over the edge, next we added on a border. This was a bunch of straights and curves over in the corners, and it's incredible just how much of a difference the border gives the entire thing. I cannot believe how much I love it. I love the sign, I love the color, I love the texture, the size, but also guys, I love the significance of what it means too. Naming the building and this new venture of mine, putting up that name to the main road traffic and advertising that something new and exciting is coming. It just floods me with happiness and pride. If you missed the video where I go into detail on what the woodshed is and what my plans are for it, then that is linked for you down below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram as I will be holding maker meetups in the future. And if you're ever in Texas, in Central Texas, then be sure to stop in and see this sign in person. I hope that this video has helped you out, maybe just for curiosity's sake on new and cool techniques with technology, or maybe you have a sign in the works. Either way, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. I will see you soon.